Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. God's sure word that serves as a firm foundation for us is the gospel reading from John 10, where we see Jesus is our good shepherd. And we are reminded by, of this very real fact that sheep need a shepherd. As has been said many times over, though we like the cute, cuddly pictures of Jesus holding the white, woolly little lamb in his loving arms, the better picture is of the stubborn, stupid sheep, so apt to stray and wander and find themselves in trouble. Jesus is indeed, thanks be to God, our good shepherd. Now there's a lot going on in John chapter 10. And really, it's tough to kind of make sense of it all within 10 to 12, maybe 15 minutes of a Lutheran sermon. There's just a lot. We know that Jesus is our good shepherd, but we really don't even get to that part until we get to John 10, verse 11. Here we hear Jesus talking about being a gate, or being the door, and how he has come to give life so that we might have life and have it abundantly. But in the midst of all this, he's also talking about all of those thieves and robbers that come in, not through the door, not through the gate, but they kind of climb over the wall just trying to find ways that they can deceive the sheep. Why? Because it is their intent to kill and destroy. So even before we get to this beautiful picture of Jesus as this good shepherd, we have to talk about the other side of it. And how there are too many people. There are so many voices. The shepherds that aren't really shepherds. That may look the part, they may even sound the part, but their intent is not to bring life, but to deceive, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Boy, that's uplifting. <laughs> All of this is again to say, we are sheep that need a shepherd. I remember at the seminary, one of my professors actually grew up on a sheep farm. And he would talk frequently about he, growing up as a young child, would have to do many things just so that the sheep would keep themselves out of harm's way. He would talk about how the sheep would put their head through the fence so they could get to the green grass, but then they couldn't figure out how to get their head out of the fence. So it was his job to go to the sheep and to grab them by the head, turn it, and push them through the fence so they could get back out. Otherwise, they would just stay there. He would talk about times where they were in danger for whatever reason. Maybe there was the potential threat of a predator, or maybe it was just the grass had run out or gone dry, and yet they wouldn't move. They would just stubbornly stand there. And so it was his job, along with his siblings, to herd them to greener pastures, to bring them to safety. This is the picture that Jesus intends when he talks about us as sheep. And it's not meant so much to make us feel worse about ourselves, but to properly understand just what it means for him to be our good shepherd. To know that he is the one who cares for us, provides for us. Because if we were sheep without a shepherd, we'd be in a whole lot of trouble. We find ourselves wandering, we find ourselves straying, we find ourselves listening to all sorts of other voices that sound good at first, but maybe lead us further and further and further away from the kingdom of heaven. 
This is really the great danger of listening to any voice other than the Good Shepherd. If you remember one year ago on Good Shepherd Sunday, I showed a video. And in that video, it depicted a whole bunch of sheep out in the pasture. And they had all sorts of voices calling out to them. All sorts of voices trying to cry out and get their attention. And one by one by one, those voices shouted in all short sorts of pitches and tones, rendered nothing. It wasn't until the shepherd came and said the exact same words when all of a sudden all of the sheep's heads perked up and turned, heard the voice of their shepherd, and came to him. Why? Because they knew that all those other voices meant nothing. It was only the voice of their shepherd that was going to bring them to a place where they would find food and water and safety. And yet, in our text, we don't even hear Jesus say, I am the good shepherd. We do hear him say, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and he will go in and out and find pasture. Jesus is the door. He is the means by which we enter the house of the Lord forever. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, David says, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Well, how do we get into the house? Jesus says, I am the gate. I am the door. If you listen to my voice, if you hear me, then and only then will you find green pasture. This text ultimately calls out to you and to me and says there's a lot of voices that you can listen to. There are talking heads on every station, on every channel that will tell you something that you either really don't want to hear or really do want to hear. And if you listen to somebody or something that really makes you angry, just flip the channel and you'll hear somebody who tells you everything that you want to hear. And whether they're whispering promises or lies or deceptions or truths, there are voices out there shouting all over the place. We live in a culture of noise. People trying to convince us of certain truths, certain realities. And this text is a reminder to each and every one of us to stay grounded in the Word of God. My sheep hear my voice. When we may not audibly hear the voice of God here and now, but we will hear it every time we open the Scripture. Every time we flip through the pages of the Bible, the Lord is speaking to you and to me. And he's saying, I know what's out there. I know what the other voices are saying. I know what you're hearing and what you're wrestling with. But this is what truth is. Hold fast to me. Listen to my voice. Because only, only through me, only by listening to me will your faith be found and your salvation secured and you will be led to greener pastures. Again, this is one of those texts that we could really start to pull apart in Bible study or if we had another couple hours. Parsing every word and getting the nuances of who Jesus might be pushing back against and really what he's trying to get us to understand. And so for all of the questions that this text may bring, let's go back to what we know to be true. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. For all of the things 
that we don't know, for all of the questions that we have, for all of the doubts that possess us, for all of the talking heads that we hear out in this world, there is one reality that is undeniable and center to any celebration on Good Shepherd Sunday. And it's this. The Lord is your shepherd. The Lord is the one who watches over you. The Lord is the one who cares for you. He protects you. His rod and his staff are out there to fend off evil, to beat back the devil. Because of his immense love for you. His wayward sheep. That oftentimes, maybe we dig in our hoofs and we get a little stubborn. But God promises life. Goodness. Mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And so in just a few short minutes, we will celebrate at the table. Our head will not be anointed with oil, but we will receive the body and blood. Our cup will overflow with the grace of our God. As he says, take and eat, take and drink. All these things are given for you so that you might know that it is the good shepherd alone who forgives your sins and who cleanses you from all unrighteousness. We receive this meal to rejoice in this reality. That it is the good shepherd. It is our good shepherd who laid down his life for us. And yet three days later burst forth from that tomb to declare that you and I will have an abundant life in eternity. What an incredible feast awaits us there. Jesus is crucified. Jesus is risen so that we might have life and have it abundant. That's who your good shepherd is. Peter writes in our epistle reading, he says, He himself bore our sins on his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness, because by his wounds you have been healed. For you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and to the overseer of your souls. This is the hope that we have as Christians. That our good shepherd is watching over our lives. He is the overseer of our soul. The Lord is your shepherd. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Dear God in heaven, we thank you for the incredible gift of being our shepherd. Lord, we know that there are far too many times where we try to find green pastures in other places, or we wade into waters that are far from still. But Lord, you and you alone can restore our soul. You and you alone can provide us the righteousness, the salvation that we need. And so, Lord, as we walk through the valleys that this life throws our way, through darkness and doubt, through fear and death, help us to look again to you, to our good shepherd, that we would fear nothing because we know that you are with us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.